Hi everyone. In today's video, we're going to talk about semaphores within Java. A semaphore is a way that you can control the number of threads that are going to access a certain shared resource concurrently. This is different from locks because with a lock, you have a thread that waits for a lock, gets it, and then releases it when it's done. With a semaphore, the concept of actually locking a singular resource is decoupled from the number of resources that you're trying to gain access to. So in the end, it's another resource we programmers can use when we need to deal with concurrency in our code. Let's go ahead and pull up IntelliJ and look at some examples. So now that we have IntelliJ up, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create an instance of a semaphore. And what you'll notice is that we have to give this constructor an argument and the argument that we're giving it is permits. So what permits means is this is the number of threads that can access the resource or the condition that the semaphore is going to protect. So in this case, I'm going to make it a binary semaphore, meaning that only one thread can access the resources that the semaphore is protecting. And now that we've made our semaphore, let's go ahead and look at some properties. The common one you want to look for is available permits. This will tell you how many more permits your semaphore has. So if we run this code, we have one, which means that we could have one more thread try to acquire the semaphore and do something with the shared resource. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to acquire one of those permits. So semaphore.acquire, and this can throw an exception. So we're going to have to go ahead and let's go ahead and declare the checked exception interrupted there. And the reason that can throw interrupted, I'll get into in a bit here, but basically acquire can block if there is a permit that's not available. But for now, we're just gonna grab the one immediately and we're gonna see that the number of available decreases. And now we hit zero as we expect. And if we want to reclaim the permit, you can do release. And we'll see after we do a release that we're back to one again. So now I'll go ahead and have my semaphore take up to three permits. I'll have it call acquire twice and release once. And we can see that the level of permits is two because we acquired two and released one. Another thing to note here is that acquiring and releasing is not necessarily tied to multiple threads each time. It's just often semaphores are used in the context of concurrency, but they don't necessarily tie to individual thread instances acquiring and releasing. You can actually have different threads release permits that had been acquired by other threads. So you got to be careful whenever you are calling the acquire and release methods that you know what you're doing and with the thread that you're doing it with. Likewise, in the acquire method, I can acquire more than one permit. So if I pass in two right here, then this will try to acquire two out of the three permits that we have. And then you can see we acquired all three of ours between these two acquire calls and then we released one. So what happens if we hit zero and we try to acquire another one? So this acquire we would expect wouldn't be able to acquire because all three of our permits have already been acquired after this first line. Let's go ahead and run the code and see what it does. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Okay, our program's hung. And this is why we can have this interrupted exception happen because if another thread were to interrupt the current thread that is trying to acquire the semaphore, it would throw an interrupted exception. And that's why we have to declare this here. So basically we are waiting for an acquire and now we're not doing anything. So we actually have to kill the program because it's never going to acquire that permit. So I mentioned that semaphores are often used in the context of multi-threading and concurrency. So I'm gonna go ahead and rewrite the code to have multiple threads involved and we're going to show some other methods that we can use with semaphores when we're dealing with multiple threads. <laughs> All right, so walking through this code a little bit. In our main method, we're creating an instance of main because we're going to use a non-static method here in a thread. Our semaphore here still has three available permits. Then we have 100 threads. Actually, we have, let's go ahead and make this 99. So now we have 100 total threads within our thread pool and we have 99 threads that are each trying to acquire our semaphore. And then we have a sleep here and every second we're checking to see how many threads are in the queue trying to acquire our semaphore. And then within our try acquire method, we attempt an acquire so we block here until our place in the queue is done and we can acquire the semaphore. 
we sleep for anywhere between zero to one second, and then we release the semaphore. So let's run the code and see what it does. All right, so we have a queue length here, and as you can see, it's slowly decreasing, and that's because we had a whole bunch of threads queued up at the front, and now a lot of threads are releasing the permit that they had on the semaphore, so then threads that were later in the queue can now access it. And I didn't handle the case properly when we end in zero, so, but that's fine. This at least addresses the point of how you can have multiple threads waiting to acquire a semaphore. And then you can have each of them release, though again, the release of the semaphore is different from locks. You don't have to have the same thread that acquired the semaphore also release it. You could have any thread do that. And one other thing I want to mention really quickly is that the documentation does mention that the queue length returns an estimate of the number of threads. The reason it's an estimate it mentions here is because that value can change dynamically. So essentially the get queue length, that doesn't block when it's reading the queue. It gets the current state of the queue and essentially take a snapshot of it and then it looks. It doesn't update as each time that a new thread gets added onto the queue. So it gets us an idea. It's not always exactly accurate, so I wouldn't rely on it 100%, but it can give you kind of a general idea of where things are at. So now that we've done that example, the next thing I want to do is I want to demonstrate something that might be a little more applicable. Think about when you've got a server and you need to essentially do some resource throttling on the number of active connections or user that your server is going to handle. So I've got this server that I've deployed and I'm getting requests from clients and let's say a million requests and I want to limit it to a thousand users. How do I do that? Well, one way you could do it is you could have semaphores essentially say, this is the number of users I'm going to handle at one given time. Let's go ahead and start implementing it and see how it could work. All right, so let's create a new class. We're gonna call it server. And what we're gonna do first is we're going to have a constructor that populates some information about our server. So we'll make a public server. And it's going to have a number of users that it can handle. Let's go ahead and make that a constant. Let's do 100 for now. And then let's go ahead and make our semaphore. We could go ahead and do that up here as well. Private final semaphore. And now since it's final, we have to define it in the constructor. And our semaphore is going to be able to have a total of num users available. And then now I want to have a login and a log out method. So instead of waiting, because when you try to log in to a server and it doesn't let you in, should it really spin or should it tell you, hey, I'm busy right now, I can't handle your request, try again later. Personally, I don't like the spinning wheel of death. I like getting told immediately if there's an issue and then to come back later and try again. So instead of blocking, we're going to do a try to acquire a semaphore. So to do that, let's go ahead and call our method try login. And then we're going to return semaphore dot try acquire. And the try acquire method basically doesn't block. What it does is if there's an available permit, it immediately acquires. And if there's not an available permit, then it returns false and doesn't acquire anything. So the nice thing about this is that it doesn't block your threads indefinitely and you can get a return statement to see if there's anything that's ready. So now we have a login. Now let's do a log out. And for this, all we have to do is semaphore.release. And now I also want some way to indicate what the status of my server is. So I'm gonna do that in a separate thread. So I'm gonna make a private method, which is essentially just going to print the status of everything. Uh, we'll just loop indefinitely until we know that we're done. And we're gonna have to handle interrupted exceptions. Let's go ahead and sleep for a second initially. So we'll have to catch interrupted exception. 
and let's wrap this in a runtime exception. So now in here, what we wanna do is we wanna indicate the number of users that are currently on our server. So to do that, you'd wanna do num users minus semaphore dot available permits. If you think through that, basically we have number of users, which is 100, and we want to look at the available permits that are left, meaning that if we start, this would be 100, this would be 100, meaning there are no users on our server. And then if all of our permits are gone, this will be zero. So then we have 100 users on our system. So now that we have our server here, let's go ahead and try to make some clients that connect to this and update it. We'll do that in our main method here. So we'll make a server. And then we'll have another source of random. And then I'm gonna create an executor and I'm gonna go ahead and have it submit a whole bunch of tasks. All right, so what we have here is we have our executor service with 1,000 requests, so 1,000 threads. And for each thread, we are executing the Lambda expression in here, which is a runnable. And what we're doing is we are trying to log into our server. And while we can't log into the server, we sleep a random number of time between zero and 999 milliseconds. And then once we have the semaphore acquired, then we hold on to it for up to a second, and then we release it again. So when we are looking at how our server gets used, let's go ahead and now use the print status method. So let's just make a new thread and then have that execute a runnable as well, which will be this dot print status. And actually I'm gonna make this a lot simpler because this is a, just a method reference. And I can delete those as well. All right. So now what this should be doing is it should call print status and we're going to sleep for the first second while our first few threads are acquiring the semaphore and we are building up the number of users on our system. And then we're going to iteratively keep servicing the number of users that we want until we run out of users because everybody finishes their login attempt. Let's go ahead and run the code and see if it's doing that. Whoops, made a mistake. I have to actually start the thread. That's what you get for uh, not running the code often enough, Will. Go ahead and try it again. All right, that's better. So now we have 100 users and now we're quickly decreasing. And now we have no more users. Okay, let's go ahead and stop the code. And there are a few other things I wanna to do to update this. I wanna better handle when we have zero users left in our queue. And I wanna see how many times we have users trying to ask the server to log them in. So I'm gonna modify the code to do those two things next. All right, so walking through the additions, I added in a login attempts field using a long adder. A long adder is essentially an efficient version of an atomic long that was added in Java 8, which when you're dealing with a lot of different ads, it is really efficient. It uses a little more space than an atomic long, but it's more efficient as far as performance goes. So that's why I decided to use it here. And what we're doing is we are incrementing each time we call the try login method. And then within the print status method, if our current users equals zero, we break out and we print out that we have serviced all the requests. Otherwise, what we do is we print out the current number of users and the login attempts. Actually, let me go ahead and also print out the number of login attempts that this took. All right, so now we have that there. Now let's go ahead and run the code again and see what it does. All right, there we go. All right, interesting. It took 4,874 login attempts that time. Now, if we run it again, it should be different because we did randomize this a little bit. And that time it took 5,126 and the current users were already 36 there, so it only took three additional login attempts after that. Interesting. And that was an overview of semaphores within Java. The important thing to remember about a semaphore is that the acquire and release methods don't have any bearing on the thread that ran them. 
That is very different from lock, which is you have a single thread that acquires an object monitor as a lock, then it releases the lock when it's done. That's a single thread doing all that. You could have one thread that handles the entire semaphore acquire and release process, or you could have seven threads do it. It's completely arbitrary and up to the programmer. If you learned something new and you found this video helpful, please do give this video a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a good rest of your day, and I hope to see you next time. Take care.